So you clicked on this video and you're wondering, okay, is this legit or is this total clickbait where I can start getting business credit without actually having a business? And the answer to that is what you're going to find that in this video because you can 100% start working your way into some not only business cards, business credit cards, but start working your way into some higher credit limits with your business lines of credit once you open them up if you follow the steps found in this video. But first things first, why would you even want business credit cards, right? You probably have an Amex to your name with a $10,000 limit. Maybe you have a Discover card where you have $5,000. Maybe you have a Chase Sass, uh, Sapphire that you maybe opened it up, it was $5,000. Now you've worked it all the way up to right around 10, 12, even $15,000. Or what if you have a multiple, let's say catalog of cards from anywhere from a tier one to a tier three, where you've opened up these different lines of credit and now you have 10 to $30,000 worth of personal credit that you can use for your business. Irv, why would I even want to have any type of business credit. And well, let's just go ahead and go into three reasons why I think you are going to want to have eventually business credit to fund your business, to fund your opportunities, and to fund your ideas versus just having personal lines of credit. The first reason is you are going to get way more business or you're going to get way more credit increases and credit limit when you have a business line of credit versus a personal line of credit. A good rule of thumb is for every, let's say thousand dollars, you want to have at least a five X rule on that. So let's say that you have a $10,000 personal line of credit. You have some established credit. You're using it. You're paying it off every single month. You're up to date. You have a good payment history. You could usually expect to receive right around a five fold on that, which is a $50,000 line of credit. If you are going to be using that business line of credit and treat it the same way that you're using your personal line of credit. Let's be honest here. We can all use some extra money, especially if it's not our own money so that we can then double or even triple that in some of the business ideas or strategies that we have in mind, whether that's buying more products, whether that's maybe hiring for some more help, or if that means going out and possibly marketing your business so that you can bring more attention over to your website or maybe to your storefronts. Now, the second reason why you're going to want to have business credit and not just your personal lines of credit is let's be honest here. No one wants to run up these high credit limits and then have to pay them off or run the risk of not being able to pay them off the next month in full and then getting our personal score completely plummeted, which is what we see happen with a lot of people where they have their businesses or they have their ideas or they have their side hustles. They run up their personal lines of credit and maybe this month right here coming up doesn't necessarily uh, blow up the way that you thought it would financially, but the next month does and you're used to maybe not carrying any balances. In the business world, this works completely differently from what it does in the personal credit world. In the personal credit world, this means that your credit score is going to plummet anywhere between 50 to 100 points if you run up these credit limits, let's say 10, 15, $20,000 worth of personal credit and don't pay them off in full or don't bring them below that 30% threshold. In the business world, they actually want you to utilize more credit so that they can in the back end give you more money to work with once you start paying them back and once you have obviously a positive history and positive trajectory. And of course, last but not least, having your business credit and having your personal credit allows you to streamline and just have an easy process when it comes to money management. You don't have to wonder, okay, I bought, let's say, uh, this product right here. Was this for my business card or was this for my personal? Okay, wait a minute. What about this gas? Was this for personal use or was this maybe transportation for uh, business use? Or maybe if you take out a client or maybe if you're hosting an event and you guys go out for dinner and you're swiping your personal card. Okay, is this for, uh, was this for leisure or was this for business? It helps you really differentiate what you're using it for and how you can kind of keep track of all of your accounts. So now you've heard really three positive sides and the list can go on, but really three main points of why we want to have business lines of credit and not just personal lines of credit. And again, you, you can come up with your own pros, like obviously the rewards are better um, and also just the access of, to funding that you have. But now let's transition into how you would actually structure yourself so that you can have access to these business lines of credit. Remember, we don't necessarily have a business just yet. We just have maybe an idea or a side hustle that we want to put into play but we eventually want to tap into some larger funding. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to name your business. Now, right now, you maybe already have an idea of what you want to do, of what you want to work on, or maybe you're already working on that, right? Maybe you drive for Uber 
Maybe you're a real estate agent. Uh, maybe you may have a YouTube channel like myself. This is just one of my businesses. And so the way that you want to differentiate, let's say this business that you run right now from either your day job or from other businesses that you have is you want to name it. So let's go back to, let's say if you're cutting hair or even if you have your own YouTube channel, or again, if you're driving for Uber, you want to first name that. By naming that, it's going to come into play in the back end, which, which we're going to get here into here in just a second. Number two, you want to then open up the LLC. Once you've figured out what you want to name it, again, it could be whatever you want, you then want to open up an LLC. You can do an S Corp, you can do a C Corp, whatever you want to get into, but I recommend that you at least take a look at the suggestion of an LLC. Now, again, you want to always speak with your own CPA and whoever helps you manage your books and your business, right? But for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the people are going to start off with an LLC, not just because it's the most, uh, what we can call inexpensive to get up and going, but it's also the easiest to get started and it's the easiest to understand, at least in my personal opinion, versus the other options that we have out there. Now that we have the LLC, we register it with the state. And again, this is going to vary depending on where you live in the country. Some parts of the country, they're going to charge you an annual fee. In some parts of the country, once you open it up that one time, as long as you're paying your taxes, then you're good to go. Now, the third thing that you want to do is you want to go on the irs.gov website and you want to get your own EIN, which is your employer identification number. The reason you want to have your employer identification number is because think of this as the social security number for your business. This is how you start to separate two different entities. You have yourself with your own social security number, and then you have the EIN. As you start establishing your businesses, as you start applying for some of these business lines of credit, you are going to use your EIN versus solely using your social security number. This is how you start to differentiate your personal credit getting hit versus having that business line of credit that doesn't reflect on the personal side and drive down your personal score. It can hurt you financially on the back end. Now, the fourth step to this is the glue to everything. And you want to make sure that you don't skip this part because this is what's going to help you get big lines of credit. And that's going to be having your business account set up. Remember, you already have possibly your personal checking with whatever bank you have uh, access to that you have direct deposits to. Now you want to find out, okay, is this income that's coming in, is this going into my personal account or is this going into my business account? The reason you want to differentiate this is because when you go to open up these big lines of credit, when you go to apply for five, 10, 15, even hundred thousand dollars, worth of business credit, they're going to ask you on some of these questionnaires, okay, was this from your job or was this from your business? Was this maybe a personal fund or was this a business transaction? It makes it a lot easier on the back end when you go to apply and you go through the underwriting, the whole nine yard, when you have these bank accounts open. But you're probably thinking, okay, Irv, wait a minute, but you mentioned earlier that we don't necessarily need a business to have some of this business credit getting established. And the answer to that is going to be yes. Before you get any type of business credit, they are going to look at the history of transactions that you've been having for your business. This is why even before, let's say you even went out and made your first hire, and by the way, you don't even need to have any employees to get business credit, but let's say even before you had a website set up, before you even went out and opened up your EIN or your LLC, you can at least start keeping track of all of those business expenses as well as business income from the transactions that were being made. This just makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner for again, these lenders and these credit card companies to go in and say, okay, this is a legit business. We can go ahead and give them X amount in credit limit. Remember, we're just trying to make the job easier here for you on your end when you go to apply for some of these cards. Now, the fifth and final step is one that kind of plays hand in hand with having your business, not just your personal account, and that's going to be document, document, document. It makes everything a whole lot easier. You can either do it by having separate bank accounts, or you can also do that by having and using software like QuickBooks, which you're gonna find the link, which you'll find the link to that down in the bottom. Again, it makes everything a lot easier, and the whole point of this video is to make you obtaining business credit easier for you rather than making it a mission, which is what most people think it is. So there you have it. If you found value in this content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Join the official community. Don't forget that anytime we're not posting on here, we are posting over on the Inside with Earth show, which is a podcast style channel. So if you guys like what we have going on over here, you'll love what we have going on over there. Once again, I appreciate you guys checking this out. Until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next video.